Hi there, Chris, Chuff in the Cup, Moto Legends. Today we're going to be talking about downfield destination jackets, form of thermal insulation that you can wear underneath any motorcycle jacket. In particular today, we're going to talk about three different jackets. There's the Rucker Down X, there's the Klim Maverick, and there's the Bell Staff Long Way Up Down Jacket. Historically, many motorcycle jackets, be they leather or textile, have come with some form of detachable thermal inner jacket. Sometimes those jackets have sleeves, sometimes they are configured just as gilets. And they're normally comprised or constructed with some kind of hollow form fibre that traps the air, that insulates heat close to the body. The truth is, however, that in most cases, those thermal inners, those detachable thermal inners, are not particularly special. You can normally achieve the same degree of heat by going to merino or some other form that is thinner and provides just as much insulation. And what happens is many bikers end up throwing their inner jackets away from day one and just never use them. So this is my set. Over a number of years, I've put these in a drawer in the garage, never used them again. They sit there, they're never gonna be used. There is another problem with these jackets, with these inner jackets, and it's just that they're a bit fiddly. So they normally have zips that zip into the jacket. They will have maybe a button on the side here that zips them into the flanks of the jacket. You might have buttons on the sleeves. So they just create a hassle. So if you go out and, on a morning, you're not sure whether you need it. You decide to take the thermal out. You've got to unzip it. You've got to take the buttons off. And then at some point when it's cold again, you've got to go through the whole process again and put the buttons in the correct place. On a rucker jacket, you'd have a red and a black button. It's all got to be done correctly. It's all a, a bit of a pain and it's a little bit time consuming. Well, more recently, the concept of the downfield destination jacket has come to the fore. In fact, ironically, the concept was invented first by Bell Staff. They had a jacket a number of years ago, five or six years ago, called the Snavefell. Now, I'm not sure that Bell Staff, in truth, were coming at this from a technical point of view. I'm sure they just had a downfield jacket in their range and they decided it would make a nice lining, but it worked well. But it was then kind of forgotten until a couple of years ago, Rucker, with their latest jacket, the Nivala, had a downfield jacket as the thermal lining to that. And initially we looked at it and went, what has happened? Why has Rucker done this? It's ridiculous. It looks as though they're trying to save money on buttons and zips, but actually it proved to be a godsend. It works incredibly well. The fact is that a downfield jacket is probably the warmest insulating level layer that you can wear this side of something heated. The other thing is that it requires, or it does not require you to go up to a larger size jacket. So for example, with some of our jackets, you end up having to go a larger size than you need to accommodate the thermal liner. When you take the thermal liner out in the summer, you've got a jacket that's too big. So the beauty of a downfield jacket is that it squashes down to not quite, but almost nothing. So you don't need to alter the size of your jacket. The other thing, of course, is there are no attachments. The concept of the down jacket is you put it on and then actually normally because they've got a fairly silky finish, the outer jacket just slides on nice and easily. So it's just much more practical. You keep your down jacket somewhere about the bike. When you go out, you go, I don't need it today or I do need it. You pull the jacket out, you put it on, you put your jacket over it. It's just much quicker, much more convenient. So we have become, in recent years, big fans of the Downfield Destination Jacket. So this is the Downex Jacket from Rucker, and as I've mentioned already, we first saw it when Rucker brought out their top of the range Nivala Jacket, it came as part of that outfit. And again, as I've mentioned, when we first saw it, we thought it was crazy. We thought, what's going on here with Rucker? Are they trying to save a few bucks on zips and buttons and so on. We then realized it was a master stroke, it was a piece of brilliance because these things work incredibly well. In fact, this particular jacket in recent years has been immensely popular with people who own other brands of jackets. So if you've got a Furigan or a Halvarsons maybe, or even a Stadler or a Helsons leather jacket, people have been buying these to put under them because they just work better, they're easier to live with and they work better than the thermal linings that come with many other garments. And we see these, we see a lot of people buying these to go under mesh jackets as well. So if you've got a mesh jacket, it's just gonna be too cold on your average day, but you pack one of these with you and you're gonna have a mesh jacket and then when the sun goes down in the evening, you put this underneath and again, you're warm. Now, recently the idea has been copied by Klim so that their latest jacket, the Klim Kodiak 2, has one of these. Bell staff also put it in their long way up Charlie Borman jacket. It would be a bit cheeky to suggest that 
Bellstaff have copied Ruckert because, of course, as I've mentioned, they invented the concept in the first place. But I think this style of jacket is going to become very much de rigueur at the higher end of the market as the thermal lining to go to, as it were. This particular one comprises 90% duck down, 10% duck feather. The filling, it's got 110 grams of filling. All I can say is it feels quite kind of puffy, as it were. I don't know if 110 grams is fantastic or average. And I don't know because neither Klim nor Bellstaff give us a quantity of filling that's in their jackets. What we don't know, and it's a more meaningful measure of the efficiency or the warmth generated by a jacket, this jacket doesn't come with what we call a fill power rating. Now, in the sports industry, in the skiing industry, fill power is the rating you look at to judge whether a garment or how warm a garment is. This comes, unfortunately, with no fill power rating. There is one for the Klim, and I'll come on and talk about that. But the bottom line is, it's still a very warm jacket. In terms of details, you've got two outer zip pockets here. You've got a couple of inner pockets. They're not zipped, but you can put wallets and so on in there. It can be worn, and this is one of the unique things about this particular jacket, it can be worn also as a gilet. And I'm going to demonstrate how that's done. It's a little bit fiddly, so whilst I'm doing this, go off and make a cup of tea or talk amongst yourselves. You undo the zips at the top of the sleeves. There's then a kind of pouch here that you put the sleeves into. And then you have a down-filled gilet. And you might want to use this on some jackets because some jackets, in fact, a number of Bellstaff jackets come with a fixed degree of thermal lining in the sleeves. And so you might not want to put another full jacket underneath. So if you prefer for whatever reason to wear a gilet, then this is the way to go. Other little things you've got, you've got a little bit of reflective detail here on the badge. You've got elastication at the sleeve ends and also around the hem. Things like the zips are by YKK, which is what you'd always expect of a rucker. It comes in its own stuff sack. So, on most bikes, certainly if you've got a pannier or a top box, there's no problem accommodating this. But in most bikes, you'll be able to fit this somewhere. You'll be able to put it under the seat. In extremis, you'd have to put it in a little backpack. One of the main differences with the, between the down X and other downfield jackets, the other two we're going to talk about, is that this is cut deliberately short. And I actually believe that this is a bit of a benefit because the others are longer. They might work better as jackets on the street, but if you're going to zip together or if you want to wear this under a mesh jacket or some kind of blues on style leather jacket, those other jackets that we're going to talk about or are talking about are a little bit longer. So this one works really well with a short jacket or if you're zipping together, but the other ones might look better as a street jacket because this has got a, this jacket's got a bit of the kind of bolero about it when worn on the street. In terms of sizing, it goes from chest 34 inch, that's pretty small, right up to 52 inches. Uniquely in this market also, this comes in a ladies version, so a slightly more shaped version, costs 190 pounds. This is the Klim Maverick downfill jacket. I think it's probably the most technical of the three that we're going to be talking about today. It technically has an 800 fill power rating, and that's a very respectable rating. Fill power is a measure of the thermal qualities of the down and the feather. Unfortunately, we don't have a fill power rating for the other two, for the Bell Staff and for the Rucker. I suppose my suspicion is that if they had a fill power rating that was as good as this, they would publish it. So I kind of suspect that this is going to be the warmest of the three jackets, but we don't have the facilities to do a proper test. And in truth, all three are very warm. But the 800 fill power rating, just to give you a context, that is pretty high end. You can go heavier, you can get 900, you can get 1000. But when you do that, you end up with jackets that are really very large. That's the kind of jacket you would wear if you were going up say for example at Everest. This jacket is similar. The jacket that I would compare it most to is the Arcturix Thorium. Now I think Arcturix set the standard when it comes to downed jackets. That's the name really to go to. They have a jacket called the Thorium as I've mentioned. That has a 750 fill power rating. So this technically is a warmer jacket than that. And that kind of reminds me that 
whenever we do a review like this, either a written editorial or we do a video, there'll be a number of people who will respond on social media saying, oh, that's a ripoff. I can get exactly the same for half the money or a quarter of the money. Well, I'm not sure you can because the thorium jacket that is very similar to this and a lower fill power rating, that costs £270. This costs £230. I'm not suggesting that £230 is in any way inexpensive, but there is a suspicion that sometimes people have that motorcycle gear is overpriced, and I just don't believe that's the case. People also point to, they will go to someone like Uniglo and say, well, I can get a 9010 jacket and that's going to cost me £60. But we've seen those jackets. And if you put one of these next to the kind of thing you get from Uniglo, Uniglo is amazing value, but you are just not going to get the same warmth out of one of those that you'll get out of these. Because even though it's 9010, they just have a quarter, a fifth, or whatever it is of the amount of down that's in this jacket. They are not anywhere near as warm. So on balance, I'm not sure you're overpaying when you pay the kind of money that any of these jackets are gonna cost. In terms of the technicality of the jacket, this one is 90% goose down, 10% goose feathers. You get these baffles here. These are called baffles. And basically the baffles stop the down migrating around the jacket because otherwise it would all end up at the bottom of the sleeve. These baffles are heat sealed. So they call them seamless baffles. So that's good because it just means there's no stitching to come undone. And where there's stitching, you end up with feathers coming through the holes in the stitching and so on. So that very effectively stops anything moving and you can't catch the stitching on something inside the jacket. So this jacket is not gonna get um, torn apart as it were. The jacket is made of a wind resistant nylon. I would not get too carried away by that. This is not particularly wind resistant. Now, if you were wearing this under say a mesh jacket for a bit of warmth, I think you would still wanna put something underneath this to really stop the wind. So Klim, for example, have a jacket that they call the Klim Zephyr. It's a super thin windproof membrane. So if I was wearing this under a lightweight jacket and I really wanted to stop the wind chill or reduce the wind chill factor when I was on the bike, I would be wearing the outer jacket, I'd be wearing this, and then I'd be putting something like the Klim Zephyr underneath it. By the same token, Klim tell us that this jacket has a durable water repellent on it. That's a waterproof coating, but I would suggest that you really should not get carried away because the durable water repellent is probably gonna stop the water entering the jacket for 10, 15 minutes, but this is not gonna stand up to a heavy rain shower. It is eventually going to wet out, the water will seep in, and water and down do not mix well. It all ends up coagulating, you lose all of the warmth. So this is not a jacket you wanna get particularly wet. If it happens, by the way, you just put it in the dryer, put it in the dryer with some tennis balls, the tennis balls knock it around and puff the jacket back up again. One of the differences between this jacket and the other two that we're looking at today is that this one does not come with a stuff sack. It folds into its own pocket, so that's quite neat. It ends up about the same size as, as a package as the other two, but it means that you just can't lose the stuff sack. You just undo the pocket, you stuff it into the pocket, you do the zip up and you can't lose it. Other details, hem adjusters and cuff adjusters. So there's elastication here around the cuff and around the hem. What's a little bit different, a nice touch on this one as opposed to the other two is that if you put your hands in your pockets, you've got elasticated adjusters so you can tighten the hem if you particularly want to. In terms of the scotch light, more scotch light than on the, certainly than on the rucker, this whole zip, the banding of the zip is scotch light. You've got two outer zip pockets, no internal pockets. This jacket is longer than the rucker. I've mentioned that one of the nice things about the rucker is that it's a bit short, so if you're zipping together, I think that's a better jacket. This jacket's about the same length, I think, as the Bell Staff. Now, it was designed, Klim bought it into their range to go with, the, with their new Kodiak 2 jacket, and I would say that if you're zipping the top of the Kodiak 2 to the bottom of the Kodiak 2, this jacket is too long. You're going to have to fold it up. So it's not perfect in that respect. If you don't zip together, and of course you should zip together, but if you don't zip together, it's fine. It won't go longer or it won't stick out the bottom of the jacket, but I don't think this is a perfect length for zipping together. But that's not a problem. You fold it up. There's no bolt there, so I can't see that being an issue. Is this the warmest of the three jackets? Well, that's Difficult to say, we don't have the facilities to do that test, but I would think from the 800 fill power rating, that's pretty impressive. My suspicion is this is possibly the warmest. Personally, it's the one that I like the most. I think it's a lovely jacket to wear. I think the rucker's a little bit 
too short for wearing on the street. What I did when I first saw this jacket, I first saw it earlier this year when Plim sent us the samples, they sent us the Kodiak to it, had, had this in, I nicked it. I've been wearing it ever since. I wear it almost every day. I think it's a fabulous jacket. I'm very happy wearing it as my go-to jacket. It comes in a range of colors. We don't have all of the colors and as ever, Klim are gonna be short on stock, but it comes in a black, it comes in an anthracite and we hope to be getting it also in a dark blue. Sizes, it goes from a small all the way up to a 3XL. It comes in, as I've said, at 230 pounds. This jacket has a slightly confusing name. It's the Bell Staff Long Way Up Down Jacket. As we mentioned, it was Bell Staff who first invented the concept. It was Bell Staff who first put a down liner into a motorcycle jacket. And I always have to mention that because in recent years, I've developed the habit of talking about the Rucker and the Nivala and suggesting that Rucker invented the concept. Whenever I do that, Bell Staff sent me an email or complaint saying, no, they didn't invent it, we did. So technically, that's correct. It was first seen under a Bell Staff jacket. It was reintroduced last year, 2020, as part of Bell Staff's Long Way Up suit. Now, that was the suit that they developed for Charlie Borman for his trip with Ewan McGregor in their never-ending search for electrical power sockets as they rode up from South America through Central America to North America. The jacket was worn by both Ewan and Charlie on and off the bike. Now, Ewan had a completely different outfit. He didn't wear the long way up suit. He wore a wax cotton jacket, but clearly on cold days, he would have worn this. And there are lots of shots of them in the series wearing this when they're off the bike. Like the other jackets, it has a 90-10 ratio of down to feathers. In this case, it is a duck feather, not a goose feather. Some of the other details, we've got two pockets here, two slash pockets, which have poppers, not zips. You've got two inner pockets as well. You've got, as you have with the others, you've got elastication at the end of the sleeves and around the hem. Stuff sack goes into about the same size as the other two, as you would expect. Zips on this jacket by YKK, which is the zip that one would expect Bell Staff to use. In terms of the jacket and how it sits, it's a little bit longer than the rucker, which we've already said is quite short. I think it's shorter, however, than the Klim jacket. So the Klim jacket probably works best as a street jacket, but I think that this is a nice length and it will work under many jackets. It's a favorite option, I've got to say, amongst most of the staff here at Moto Legends, particularly, I might say, amongst non-bikers. So most people are going to consider that this is the most stylish of the three options because obviously it's got the Bell Staff badge on the side. But as a biker, this jacket is going to work really well on under almost any of Bell Staff's jackets. So if you've got the longer Trial Master, if you've got the slightly shorter Crosby, it will even work under the shortest Bell Staff jacket, the Mojave. And I've got one here just to make that point. So this jacket is typical of what I was talking about earlier on. It comes with a thermal liner, but it's not a particularly good one. It's not particularly high quality. And if you're going out in colder weather, because this jacket is very waterproof, it makes for a great a winter jacket. But if you want a bit more therm thermal properties with the jacket, then if you wear their thermal underneath it, then it works perfectly well. It doesn't protrude underneath the bottom. So I think that the long way up down jacket will work with most Bell Staff jackets. In terms of cost, it's 195 pounds. If you'd like to see more insulating solutions, as it were, visit the website motorlegends.com. If you'd like to learn more about any of these three jackets, then if you click on one of the links on the screen, sometimes they're up there, sometimes they're down there, that will take you directly to a page that we've created that features all three jackets. Now, when you're there, you can check out the spec in a bit more detail, you can check availability, and obviously if you want to buy one of the jackets, you can do that there and then. When you do buy from us, we try to make the process as simple, straightforward, and risk-free as we possibly can. There's no delivery charge on any item of protective wear that you buy from us. Returns are totally free, and what's more, we give you a full 12 months in which to decide whether you do want to return something to us. We have the best price guarantee in the business. Now, John Lewis is rightly famed for its never knowingly undersold price promise. We actually go one stage better. If you can find a retailer selling anything, selling anything that we sell at a price that is lower than ours, we will beat that retailer's price by a further 10%. Now, there are a few terms and conditions associated with our price beat. Nothing particularly onerous, but if you are going to price beaters, then I suggest you visit the website and check out what those terms and conditions are. If in the future you'd like to see bulletins from us about new products, then if you go to the website, at the top of every page, there's a piece of script that says newsletter sign up. Click on there, within seconds you'll be in business. 
If, however, you prefer to get your information videographically, that is to say in this form, we would be simply delighted if you wanted to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel, and you can do that by clicking on the button below. Now, last year, 2020, we gave away to one of our YouTube subscribers a Mutt 125cc motorbike. It was a bike that we had customized a little to look a little bit like one of Steve McQueen's desert sleds. Well, this year, 2021, we're going up market a little bit. We're going to be giving away a 250cc Fantic Cavallero Scrambler. But we're not giving away to a YouTube subscriber this year. We're going to be giving it away to somebody who follows us on Facebook. So if you want to stand a chance of winning this fabulous little bike, and we're going to be giving it away just before Christmas this year, then go over to Facebook and obviously give us a tick and follow us. Finally, I'd like to make a play for our fabulous little shop here at Moto Legends. We're based about a mile from the, Satan, from the center of Guildford, a mile from the railway station. And as I've said, the shop is quite small. It's got a small footprint, but it's attached to our warehouse where we've got more than two million pounds of merchandise arranged over three stories. That technically makes this the second largest motorcycle shop or motorcycle apparel shop in the UK. But we actually believe that we are far more than just the amount of merchandise we have here in the building. We're actually all about service. We're all about personal fitting. If you want to check us out, visit Trustpilot. We have the highest five-star ranking in the business. When you come and see us, we'll serve you only the finest Illy Italian coffee, or we'll serve you proper Yorkshire tea in a proper teapot. And who knows, if you're lucky, you might even get to sample one of Mark's sister's delicious motorcycle-shaped shortbread biscuits. Anyway, this has been Chris. I hope to talk to you again soon.